Let me let you in on a little secret. White people are not the only ones who make comics. <laughs> yep, today's videos are all about African comics written by Africans, illustrated by Africans, telling African stories. We're about to get blackity black 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 in here, so settle in and enjoy the ride. Before I get started though, I've got important news. This video is a sponsored video. I know, who would have thought? Started from the bottom, now we're here. It's crazy, isn't it? But it is a sponsored video. Who is sponsoring it? Kogali Media. I would get into the details of who they are further into the video, but let's just get started on 10 African comics I absolutely want to read before the year runs out, which by the way, this is September, so I have like, Four months. <laughs> the first comic on the list is Nanny Volume 2. But to get to Nanny Volume 2, we have to talk about Volume 1. And what is Volume 1 about? It's a story of two sisters, one of whom is dealing with a traumatic experience who are suddenly tossed into a magical world that is inspired by West African law, culture, and magic. I mean, this comic gave it to me everything. It gave me action. We have girls kicking ass. It also gave me sisterhood, you know, those bonds that would have you fighting one moment and then laughing the next and then willingly offering your life in order to see your sibling protected. It's a story about generational curses, a asking of the question, should the children really be punished for the sins of their father? It's a call to challenge your beliefs on exactly what makes a certain people cursed and the other group divine. I had a blast reading it. The art took a while for me to get used to it because sometimes the expressions seemed a little off but I did eventually get used to and enjoy the style. I would state though that Laia's skimpy outfit had me going but I did have a blast with this comic and I think that's why stories like it matter because one having People who are Africans or of African descent telling our stories makes it authentically ours. It also means that we're investing in African writers and African illustrators and artists and also means that we're telling the world that our art matter, that our stories matter. Stories like this and the other stories that follow in this list are also important because they challenge the monopoly that is the assumption that good comics are the purview of the big two and by the big two i mean marvel and dc you no know, stories like this break that monopoly the old that marvel and dc hold on the comic industry and i think that that is also important we need indie stories it's how we show the world that good comics amazing comics thought-provoking comics are not just solitary you know from marvel and dc like i said it's why stories like nanny and all the other comics on this list matter to me it's the reason why i accepted the sponsorship for this video because yes Nani is created and made by Kugali Media, who are the sponsors of this video. Kugali Media are a comic publication unit focused on telling authentic African stories by Africans, for Africans, and of course also for the rest of the world. It's not Africa the way white Europeans and white Northern Americans presume it to be, but it's Africa the way Africans know it to be. And trust me, there's a huge difference in that. Volume 1 ended on such a crucial note. And I'm really, really interested to see exactly how the sisters and Laia's story unfold in Volume 2. I also desperately want to know what happens with Bello. No spoilers, but I really want to know. And Kugali can only create the stories from support of the Kickstarter campaign that they created in order to fund the creation and production of Nani Volume 2. If you support the Kickstarter at any level, you get the first 40 pages of the volume as a free PDF. And even if it is that you cannot give financial support, sharing the word, tweeting about it, putting Nani up on social media might just give them the backing they need and keep us in the African stories that the world needs to see and experience. It also means that I just might get the opportunity to read Nani volume two this year, which like, 
you all will be helping me so i need i need your support for this if you want to support kugali media i would leave the links to the kickstarter campaign in the description bar so go check it out and if you want to see samples of the comics that the type of comics that kugali media has been doing you can always access the first three chapters of various comics available for free on their website i'll put the link to that in the description bar as well now i have not hidden it on my channel that i love food like your girl loves food you know i love food food is my best friend especially nigerian food i mean you all have heard me talk about my love for pepper soup jollof fries chin chin akara on my channel so it only makes logical sense that comics republic tatashe would be the second comic on my list now tatashe follows the titular character tatashe who fights strange magical creatures as she tries to find a master set in nigeria and peppered and littered with pigeon slangs and Nigerian foods in a way that just makes you think of Nigeria. And I mean, what could be more Nigerian than a title like Tatashe? Now, for those that do not know, Tatashe is the word we call um, the red bell peppers that is a staple in most Nigerian meals. I mean, we use it in our soups, we use it in our stews, we use it in our jollof rice, we blend it in our akara, we blend it in our moi moi, we put it in our vegetable soup. Like, we, we love tatashi. Like, we absolutely adore tatashi and the symbolism of using that ingredient that is so Nigerian and so crucial to a lot of Nigerian dishes. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Next up is Kwezi by Loiso Mukize, who is the creator. Get this. That is the creator of Super Striker Comics. Now, if it is that you grew up in Nigeria in the late 90s, early 2000s, the Super Striker Comics, that football comic, was a staple. Like, there was no corner, there was no supermarket, there was no place you went to that you would not see that comic. It was everywhere. Now, this comic is a coming-of-age story. But this coming-of-age story is different because here we follow our protagonist who is living in South Africa and who gets superpowers. It's the same story we've been told over and over again, but it's different because this time around, Loiso is going to take us into the heart of SA and we're going to discover this country through the eyes of the protagonist who delights in his newly discovered powers just as we delight in the sights and sounds of South Africa that we are able to experience through this comic. I cannot wait to read this. Now, speaking of comics that take place in African country that I want to explore, there is Aya, which follows our titular character, Aya, who is living in Yop City and through whose eyes we're able to get a slice of life living experience of Ivorians living in Cote d'Ivoire. Sometimes you want comics with characters who have superhuman powers and other times you just want the mundane, the mundane of everyday living and existence, falling in love, having friendships, trying to survive, coming into your own, having a coming of age story that has none of the powers and magical properties that is usually associated with the superhero genre in comics. And that is what we get with Aya. And it's definitely a comic I cannot wait. I am absolutely delighted and ready to read before the end of the year. Then there's Kamza, The Unleashing by Farida Badwe, which gives us a Ghanaian superhero. Yes, you heard that right. A Ghanaian superhero, Morua, who has cerebral palsy and who gains a power by setting free an Asian juju man that has been trapped in an excavation site in Mali. A juju man who then imbues her crutches with superhuman powers and thus her superhero persona, Kamza, is born. I mean, this has everything. It has CP rep, it has archaeologists, which I absolutely love stories featuring archaeologists. So it has CP rep, it has archaeologists, there's juju, there's power, there's magic, there's superhuman powers, um, set on the African continent and written, inspired, drawn in all way produced by Africans. This is the greatest day of my life! Ocean man, take me by my hand, Then there is Strike Guard by Ayodele. Elegba. Now, you all know I love 
when it is that gods show up in my fantasy stories and start interacting with humans and you all know how much i love shamanism i mean i have not hit it on my channel that the poppy war by arif kong is one of my favorite books ever so i really do dig shamanism and in striker we follow abolaji koka a political science undergraduate student studying at unilag that is the university of lagos for those that do not know who wakes up one day with powers and abilities and the voice of a god in his head and the doorway to the other side flung wide open and now he has to depend on both and by both i mean both his newly discovered powers and the god that is currently taking a joyride in his head um in order to fight these entities and protect everybody and everything he knows and loves i am ready for this comic i need to have read this comic like yesterday um because like it's powers, it's Lagos, it's gods, it's shamanism. Is anybody surprised that I want to read this comic? Next up is Godfall. Godfall by Igoja Araoye, which follows BC, a young boy who, when one night his home is attacked, is pushed to freedom by his father so that he can get away and survive. And the next day is discovered by Ifalade, an Ifa priest, who then um, saves him and raises him as his own son. I repeat, there's mythology in this. The art is gorgeous. The language is littered with pidgin and Yoruba words and is rooted in Yoruba culture with conversations about the slave trade before the Europeans came. I mean, I want to read this comic so bad. So, so bad. And I cannot wait to read it. I'm definitely going to be reading it. <sighs> Before the end of the year. Then there's Kiaski Donkos Anante, which you guessed it, is inspired by the Akan trickster god and the god of stories. Anansi. Who, after learning of a conspiracy that would threaten the very fabric of existence, decides to profit off of it by trying to sell the conspiracy. And in so doing, partners with Kotoko. It is an imagining of the character, complete with a magical world of gods, creatures, monsters, all rooted in the Akan folk tales and adventures of Anansi. And I'm certain nobody's surprised that he made this list. Now, a young girl disappears in 1937 and then reappears in a cemetery in modern day with no knowledge of who she is or where she has been. The only thing she knows is her name, Avonome. And she comes with a magical companion and an ability to see spirits. Greatness ensues. And I, for one, intend to partake in that greatness. As an Edo girl, to read about a girl who is Edo, with magical powers, who is kicking ass. All I do is win, 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 no matter what. I am beyond thrilled to read this comic. Ilda Avonomemi Moses is my queen and i cannot wait to read her story and finally is yet another queen like an actual queen on my list which is malika warrior queen part one by roy okupe 15th century west africa check a badass woman and queen who is also a brilliant military commander check military strategy up the wazoo all the check my girl, my queen, inherited or rather acquired the throne after her father died and had to deal with a civil war that broke up shortly immediately after that. And she was able to unite her country through sheer force of mind and will and then expanded it to become one of the greatest empires in West Africa. I am... Wow. I live for the applause, applause, applause. Indeed, we give her all, all the applause. And now she's dealing with treachery in her court while she's also fighting off the imperialistic Ming dynasty that covets her empire. I mean, is anyone surprised that this comic made the list? Like, are you? Are you? What you should be surprised at is that, oh, no, right, it took you so long to read this comic and I would rectify that this year, I promise. But yeah, those are 10 African comics I want to read before the end of the year. Let me know which of these comics you're interested in reading. I'll be sure to put in all the links in the description bar. Most of them are free, so... What can I say except 
You're welcome. I'm also going to leave the Kickstarter link to Nanny Volume 2 in the description bar as well. Remember, even if it is that you do not have the money, but you can tweet about it and share it on social media, you just might get them the backing that they need, and that also matters and it will definitely go a long way towards helping more african stories and more african comic creators get their leg up so yes that is the end of this video if you liked it do not forget to give a big thumbs up check out my other videos subscribe if you want to and if you do decide to subscribe please click on that notification bell so after you've clicked on subscribe click on that bell so you can have all notifications turned on so you do not miss any time i have a new video go up i make new videos every wednesdays and sundays at 2 p.m est yes that is 2 p.m est and i will see you soon until then stay passionate love books love yourself bye